are invited to Ozark Full Gospel Church, located in Ozark, Missouri, where we are touching the Ozark with Jesus Christ. Sit back, enjoy, as Pastor James Aiken brings forth God's exciting word. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dear. For a world of sinners was slain. So I cherish the old rugged cross. Hail my troll, last I That old rugged cross, so despised by the world, has a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear Lamb of God left his glory. Bear it to dark Calvary. So I cherish the old rugged cross. Give my trophies that last I laid down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. In the old rugged cross, stained with blood so divine. A wondrous beauty I see. For it was on that old cross Jesus suffered and died to pardon and sanctify. To the old rough crown, I will ever be true. It's shame I'd reproach gladly bear. Then he'll call me someday to my home far away. Where is glory forever I'll share So I cherish the old rugged cross 
Still my trophies at last I lay down And I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a Zechariah chapter 3 About the high priest Joshua And he was standing before the king Now the clothes he wore was dirty And his accuser was standing by And he was sure of his conviction Till the judge stood up and cried He's forgiven He's forgiven And been washed in the blood of the Lamb He's forgiven He's forgiven A redeemed man and great I Sins are no longer in the book. Come on over, Satan, and take a look. This is the blessed child of God, and he's forgiven. He's forgiven. Now I stood before my father in dirty garments such as these. I was so ashamed and broken as I fell down to my knees. Well, I knew that I was guilty. And that I would surely die But then I looked up in amazement When I heard the master cry He's forgiven, He's forgiven. And been washed in the blood of the Lamb He's forgiven, He's forgiven. A redeemed by the great I am His sins are no longer in the book Come on over Satan Take a look This is the blessed child of God and he's forgiven, he's forgiven. Yeah, he's forgiven, he's forgiven. Been washed in the blood of the Lamb, he's forgiven, he's forgiven. A redeemed by the great his sins are no longer in the book. Come on over, Satan, and take a look. This is the blessed child of God, and he's forgiven. He's forgiven. He's forgiven. He's forgiven. At Ozark Full Gospel Church, we have four exciting services every week. Our service times are Sunday morning at 9.30 and 11 a.m., Sunday night at 6 p.m., and Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. There is meaningful praise and worship and powerful preaching at every service. And we never close for any reason. We look forward to seeing you soon right here where we are touching the Ozarks with Jesus Christ. Uh, we want to get right into the Word of God tonight, and uh, if you would, go ahead and turn in your Bibles over to uh, Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16, and we're going to read seven verses there, uh, the verses 1 through 7. When you find that, you can stand with me for the reading of God's Word. Thank you, Lord. Mark chapter 16, verse 1 through 7, and this is what it says. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome had bought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him, speaking of the body of Jesus. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. 
And entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted or afraid. And he said unto them, Be not affrighted. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way, and tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him as he said unto you. I want to draw your attention back to the seventh verse. It says, go your way, tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him as he said unto you. You may be seated. I've used for a title uh, tonight's message, Jesus has gone before us. Jesus has gone before us. Now, I, I was studying several different things, preparing for tonight's service, and, and, uh, and always, it's always an incredible thing to be able to look at the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Without it, we're in, a, uh, we're in a mess of trouble. If Jesus didn't rise from the grave, we're in a whole lot of trouble. And, uh, and I, I looked at a couple, uh, uh, a couple different messages. I kept coming back to this one. This is the one that the Lord had laid on my heart. This is the message for tonight. Now you uh, mindful of, uh, be mindful also that these, uh, these messages don't just stop here. They go outside the doors to all sorts of places. So always be aware that when you're in church, it doesn't end here. Nothing with God under the anointing of the Holy Spirit ever ends there. God has something that he intends to do with it. And, uh, and he has something that he intends to accomplish. And his word will never come back void. And uh, I, want you to, I want you to think about a few things. It's not a, it's not a uh, an elaborate sermon. It's very simple, but it's very important. And so the very first thing that I want to mention to you is that Jesus has gone before us in life. He has gone before us in life. Now, we are all on a journey here in this world. We're all going, we all have different jobs, uh, professions, things that we do. We all have uh, things we do from day to day. We're all on a journey, but we all must come the same way, essentially. We're all born into this world. We all live here. Eventually, we will all die someday unless the Lord comes back, and I do hope that he comes back very soon. But we all, we all must go this way. And the amazing thing when you think about that is that Jesus has already gone this way before. You know that there's nothing that you can go through that Jesus hasn't already gone that way first. Isn't that a comfort to your heart if you think about that for a moment? That you don't know what you'll face tomorrow, but Jesus has already gone this way before. And you think about the fact that, that no matter what may come your way, Jesus has already gone this way before. He goes before us. That's what it was talking. He told these women, at the, uh, the angel told these women at the tomb. They, he said, go your way, and, and, and he goeth before you into Galilee. But still today, every person in this congregation, Jesus is going before you. He is going before you. May, you may not always be aware of his presence so much. You may, you may feel like, God, are you really there? But I want you to know he's gone this way before you. He has gone this way before you. And when I think about this, uh, it's amazing to me that God would do that. God would come here to us. God would come here and do the things that he's done. Psalm chapter 8, verses 3 and 4, listen to this. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou visitest him? I thought about that picture of the ark where the people are just tiny little ants, but how much smaller of a speck are we in this, in this galaxy that we live in? How much, how much uh, micro, more microscopic are we in this galaxy? All the, all the heavens that the Lord created. You want to know how big God is? Just look up to the sky and see the heavens declare his glory. It is amazing that that God, it says, What is, my, what is man that thou art mindful of him? What are we that God is mindful of us? Yet he loves us so much. The Son of God, he lowers himself to this place. He set aside the glory of heaven and robed himself in flesh. You know, in, in his human experience, he experienced all the things that we would experience. You know that he had hands like you and I. He had feet like you and I. He lived in a body just like you and I. God Almighty did that. It's an incredible thought. You know, this thing isn't about as many religions. Uh, they talk about man becoming God this is about the fact that God became man 
for us. The fact that God became man for us. I read a story just the other day, and I thought it was very interesting. Uh, the old uh, Baptist minister, Adrian Rogers, he's gone on to be with the Lord uh, here a few years back. But he got, a, he got a chance to witness to Muhammad Ali. Now, you know, Muhammad Ali was the boxer. He was, you know, a famous boxer, but he was also a Muslim man. He was, he, he was a, an Islamic man. And uh, Muhammad Ali, he says to Adrian Rogers in this encounter, he says, How can you believe Jesus is the Son of God, the unique Son of God, just because he was born of a virgin? And I love what Adrian Rogers says. He says, Champ, Jesus was not the Son of God because he was born of a virgin. He was born of a virgin because he was the Son of God. Wow. Think about that. It's not about... Man becoming God, it's about the fact that God became man for us. Because we were in an impossible circumstance where we could not help ourselves. And so God said, I'll help them because I love them. God became man for us. All God, all man. The Son of God, the Son of Man. God Almighty robed in flesh. Amazing to think about that. And you say, well, has he known the things that I endure? And yes, he has known toil. Yes, he's known sorrow. Yes, he's known temptation. He's known a great deal of pain. We know that he knew excruciating pains, pains that we will never experience. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Isaiah 53, 4, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Amazing. Not only has God went before us, has Jesus gone before us in life? You know, Jesus has gone before us in death. Now, every one of us, every one of us in here has not yet arrived at that place. If, if you're alive tonight, uh, can I get a show of hands? You're alive. I just want to make sure. Okay. Looks like we're pretty unanimous on that. Uh, even though it's a Wednesday night, I just want to check on that. It, it, it's amazing that, uh, that Jesus has gone before us in death. Now, now, what a great comfort that is, even so much more than in living life, that when this life is over, Jesus has already been there. When this life is done, no matter the suffering, the circumstances that we endure here, this is just a small portion of, uh, of uh, the experience that we're going to face, that someday we're going to live in eternity forever. And that would be a terrifying thought if we didn't know what was on the other side and who had already been on the other side and is waiting for us on the other side. God went before us in death. You know, when we get, have you ever went to the lake and, and you see uh, footprints all over the bank where people walk through the mud and you can see those prints all around the banks? You know, when we get to Jordan's stormy banks, we can look down and see the footprints of Jesus Christ has already walked through there. He's already walked through that, through that stormy river of death. He's already came out on the other side victorious. That's good news, amen? I thought about the fact that then when Jesus was getting ready to go to the cross, he, he went out to the Mount of Olives and he was preparing for the cross and he was praying in Luke 22, verses 42 through 44, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was, as it were, great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Amazing. Can you see the Son of God in prayer? He's toiling. He's agonizing. He was praying. He, uh, you know, that, that, uh, that word uh, agony means an extreme mental or physical suffering in that moment. He is toiling for us. And I thought about him as, as Jesus is there looking at the ground and he's praying and it, it, his sweat became as it were great drops of blood and, and he's getting ready to go to the cross of Calvary for each one of us in this room. And can you imagine as he's there and he's looking at the ground praying how he, he perhaps in that moment he began to remember the day that he stooped down and formed Adam from the dust of the ground. Could you, could you think about how he was there and he perhaps he remembered the day that he was formed Adam from the dust of the ground and he, and he looked into Adam's face and in, and in that face he's seen the face of every single one of us in this room in Adam he's seen the face of you and you and you and you and me in Adam he was seeing that and, uh, and he breathed the breath of life into him and, and man became a living soul and even though he knew that someday he would have to come and die for us to redeem all of mankind 
He was willing to do that. Can you see him doing that? Can you see him praying? Can you see him toiling? Can you see the sweat dropping from him as it were great drops of blood as he's preparing to go to Calvary? Wow. In that moment, he saw you. In that moment, he saw me. Wow. Hebrews 2, 9 says, But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with the glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. And in that hour, it was, it was an hour of very much heaviness. The wrath of God was going to be poured out on his son. The heaviness of that hour, could you imagine the heaviness of an hour? It, it, was, so, it was so much so that there was an angel that came strengthening him in that, in that hour. That's what the Bible says. And his sweat came, became, as it were, great drops of blood. Now we look at the cross as he's getting ready to die and the amazing words that he says in John 1930, when Jesus therefore had received the, the vinegar, he said, it is finished. He bowed his head and gave up the ghost. He said, it's finished. The commandment that he received of his father to come here, to lay down his life, to take it up again, that's a commandment. But that atoning work, the sacrifice was made, it is finished. You know what that means? The Bible says the wages of sin is death. You know, we sin, we, we earn our wages, we earn that wage is death. You work a job, you expect to get paid so much money. When you sin, the wages is death. Your earnings is death. Every single one of us, we've ever lied, we've ever stolen, we've ever, we've ever cheated, we've ever, we've ever taken God's name in vain. Every single one of us are guilty of transgressing against God's law. And we've earned our wages. The wages of sin is death. In Jesus, when he said, it is finished, you know what he was saying? He was saying, the debt is paid. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The debt is paid. And he died for us. He went before us in death. Amazing. Greater love has no man than this. That a man lay down his life for his friends. Now, look at, look at, ne at the next one. Is that Jesus has gone before us in resurrection. If Jesus had just died, like I said earlier, we'd be in a mess. But Jesus didn't just die. Look at what it says in Acts chapter 2, verse 24, speaking of Jesus, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holding of it. Not possible. It was impossible for death to take hold of Jesus and keep him in the tomb. Death had finally met someone that was greater than him. It was not possible for death to take hold of Jesus. He could hold as tight as he wanted, but it was not possible. Not possible to hold on to them. I love that. Let's turn back to Mark 16. I want to I wanna look at something. Where we started, uh, Mark 16, verses 3 through 6. Listen to what it says again. And they said among themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? And when they looked, they saw the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white raiment, and they were affrighted. And he saith unto, him, unto them, Be not afraid. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. Now look at what it says. Who shall roll away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? And when they got there... It was already rolled away. You know, when they put Jesus in that tomb, they sealed, they sealed that stone the best that they could. They sealed Jesus in there. And in the same way, death tried to seal Jesus into that tomb. But he broke the seal of that tomb and he come up out of there victorious over death. And he's alive forevermore. When you get to that place, you're going to find out that the stone has already been rolled away. It's not there anymore. He's already broke the seal and come out alive. 
Praise God. Jesus defeated, listen, Jesus defeated death from the outside in. You know, when he called Lazarus back from the dead, he said, Lazarus, come forth. And from the outside in, he commanded Lazarus to come forth, and the dead came forth from the outside in. But when Jesus died, he went into the tomb, and he defeated death from the inside out. He did it from the outside in, from the inside out. You know what that means? That our dead hearts inside of us, that Jesus can come into that heart, that cold place of death inside of you, and he can bring you life from the inside out. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. No longer do we need to ask that question, who's going to roll the stone away? It's already been settled. Jesus has already rolled the stone away. It's already been done. Death can no longer seal you inside. You've got a way out. Hey, I'm enjoying it whether you are or not. <laughs> that's, a, that's so wonderful. I love that Jesus said in John 11, 25 and 26, you know the verse, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Yes. <laughs> Can you say yes? I believe this. Jesus said it. I believe it. I was dead in, in sins and trespasses of sin, but Jesus came into my heart and he brought that life from the inside out. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6, it says, For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Out of this cold, dead heart, Jesus came and brought life to me. Out of this cold, dead heart, he took my sins and he washed them away with his precious blood. He caused the light to shine inside of this from the inside out. And I'm going to do the very best I can to let my light so shine before men that I can bring glory to Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Woo. <laughs> Jesus made that proclamation in Revelation chapter 1 verse 18. He said, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen and have the keys of hell and of death. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> He's gone there before us in resurrection. If we'll, fight, if we'll get ourselves in Jesus, we can go everywhere Jesus has gone. We can go to death and not have to fear because Jesus has already been there. We can see those footprints going right up through the stormy banks of the river Jordan. He crossed right on through. And he says, you can come on right on through too. And he'll bring you back. He gives us life. He gives us everlasting life. It's never going to go old. Jesus is amazing. Give God a praise tonight. <laughs> praise God. Woo, he's good. <laughs> Praise God, he's gone before us in resurrection. Now listen, he's gone before us into eternity. Into eternity. That's a scary thought, you think about eternity, unless you know Jesus. Never ending. Never ending. You can't, you can't even wrap your, we're, we're bound in time here, and, and we can't even wrap our minds really, truly. The far-reaching scope of that. So important to know that your heart's ready with the Lord. He could return tonight right here in this moment. So important to know that, 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 that everything's okay with the Lord, that you made peace with God because he could come back right now. And, and any one of us could, could leave this world today. Over 150,000 people die a day. A day. It's by the grace of God that each one of us are here. And we need to know for sure where we're going to be in eternity because eternity never ends. This life here will come to an end. Just like we talked about earlier, we're all born, we all live, and we all die someday. But after that is the forever. I was witnessing, I told Don this just earlier before the service, witnessing to a Buddhist man on the square in Springfield one night. And, uh, and I talked to him. We, we, we were talking about how uh, once you leave this world, death will seal you in the condition that you're in. And uh, if you are without Christ, you're facing an eternity in, in hellfire. And he told me, he said, well, uh, you know, if it's for all eternity, eventually I'll just get used to it. And I said, buddy, 
Go ahead and jump in a fire now. Tell me how used to it you get. But eternity is forever. And I want you to remember something, that God is not bound by time or eternity. I love what Psalm 90, verse 2, it says, Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. No beginning, no ending. Almighty God, not bound by time or anything like we are. God created time. From everlasting to everlasting. Amazing God that we serve. Yet, he has gone to prepare us a place. Jesus has. Gone to prepare us a place in eternity. Because he knows that we're going that way. And because he knows that we're going that way, he's gone every place that we're going to go. He left nothing, nothing undone. Every place that we're going to go, he has prepared the way for us. He's gone before us into eternity. Now, I've, uh, I, up to this point, before I read this next passage of Scripture, I just want to recap that Jesus, of course, you know, lived a sinless life. He's gone to the cross for us. He's arose from the grave. And here he is about to ascend into heaven. Luke chapter 24, verse 50 through 51. And he led them out as far as Bethany. And he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. Now I've mentioned this before. But the last thing that they saw, Jesus' hands lifted up, blessing them. Just imagine that. Just before this, he had opened the scriptures and the law and the prophets and the psalms, the things concerning him. And they are seeing him alive, the Messiah. They're seeing him. God Almighty, and he's bearing the marks to show he had purchased their forgiveness. And as his hands were lifted up against the backdrop of that eastern sky, you could see the light shining through the nail prints in his hands. What a picture to see. Can you see his hands? Can you see those nail-scarred hands? That they hated the works that he did. They hated the good that he did. He went about doing good and healing people and raising the dead. And so they nailed those hands to the cross. They wanted to stop him from doing that. They nailed his feet to the cross because they didn't like those feet that went about doing good, going place to place, helping people, loving people. They nailed those feet to the cross. But those nails have long since dissolved. <laughs> but Jesus has not. <laughs> and there he is, getting ready to ascend into heaven. And he lifts his hands. And you can see those nail prints in his hands. The last thing they see is Jesus is carried away into heaven. And what they must have been thinking about in that moment. If you could have one picture out of God's photo album, that would be one of the ones I would want to see. Hands lifted up, blessing. And they must have been thinking about the promises that Jesus said, like he said in John 14. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, you know, in the way you know. What a promise. And I'm going to follow him all the way. I'm going to follow him all the way. I'm going to follow him through life. I'm going to follow him through death if he chooses to tarry his coming. And I'm going to follow him into eternity where he's going to be waiting with those arms lifted up. <laughs> Nail prints in his hands. That's my Lord. That's him. I know him. Oh, praise God. He's preparing us a place. He's gone before us in eternity. How amazing is that? He's gone before us in everything, in life and death and resurrection and eternity. And he left some things behind for us. <laughs> he left some things behind for us. He left us the victory of the cross. 
He left us a victory of the cross, that emblem of suffering and shame, as the song says. And I love that old cross because it was where Jesus took my place. It's where he took the suffering and the pain for me. He went there for me, and he left us the victory of the cross. He left us the victory of the cross where God Almighty poured out his wrath on his son in my place. The Bible says he was numbered with the transgressors. Can you see how out of place Jesus is in the lineup? You see a lineup of criminals from time to time. Could you see Jesus in a lineup of murderers and thieves and adulterers? How out of place is he? We would be right at home in that lineup. But he was numbered with the transgressors for us. He left us the victory of the cross. He left us the victory over sin and death. And no longer has dominion over us. He gave us a new heart, new desires. Death could not hold him. And if you're in Jesus Christ, it can't hold you either. Praise God. He left us the victory over sin and death. He, and he gave us this promise of eternal life. He gave us this promise of eternal life, that hope that we can look forward to, that someday where I am, there ye may be also. He left us that promise that we're going to be with him, that it doesn't end here, and it just gets better from here, not worse. We've had those days where things just get worse. But when this life is over, in Jesus, things are just going to get better and better and better and better. And we'll say, Lord, could it get any better? And he'll say, yes, it's getting better and better throughout all eternity because his goodness and his mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. No beginning and no ending. How incredible is that? He said, when I go away, I will not leave you comfortless. And he sent us his Holy Spirit <laughs> to empower us, to be able to live as witnesses, to give us the power of testimony and service about the fact that Jesus Christ changed my life. And, he, and we can go to somebody and we can say, he can do it for you too. And he can change you. It doesn't matter where you are. That, that Jesus Christ can come into that heart and cause the light to shine from the inside out. He'll give you a new heart. He'll give you new desires. He'll make you a new person in Christ. Jesus and he'll give you the power to live it yes yes he will now I want to come back one more time to Mark 16 and this is where we left off earlier verse 6 and 7 he saith unto, him, unto them be not afraid you seek Jesus of Nazareth which was crucified you know you seek Jesus of Nazareth the one that lived the one which was crucified, the one that died. He is risen, the one that rose again from the grave. He's not here. Why? Because he's gone away for us now. But they say he's not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But listen, go your way. Tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him as he said unto you. Now I want you to know that these women were going from this place, they were going armed with the knowledge Jesus was alive. They were going armed with the knowledge. They had seen him die on the cross, knew he was dead. They come to the tomb, and they say, go your way. He goes before you. And now they're going armed with the knowledge that Jesus Christ is alive. So are you and I. But here's what I want to say. You've got to come to the cross. You've got to come to the empty tomb. You've got to have this revelation of who Jesus is. He's God Almighty, the Son of God. You've got to see what he's done before you go your way. Before you go your way, you better be armed with the right knowledge and understanding before you go your way. You hear me now? Proverbs 16, 25 says, There is a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. The way that your own ideas, your own knowledge, your own thoughts, I'm going to go this way. I'm going to go my way. I did it my, you know, the old song, I did it my way. That's the worst way. 
That's the way that leads to death and destruction. But Jesus gives us all knowledge. I've been there before you. I've lived. I've died in your place, sinless and perfect. I died in your place, the perfect sacrifice. Rose again from the grave. I've gone to prepare a place for you. And now he's saying to each and every one of us tonight, go your way. He goes before you. Awesome. Awesome. When you have that revelation, you can confidently go your way. He goes before you. And you know what? You're going to see him. Just as he said. Remember when he gave us a promise in John 14. If I go, I will come again. And we'll see him just as he said. Hmm. As we come to the conclusion of the message, I want to just mention a few other things. Jesus, he left us these road markers along the way. And as we know, we've, he's went before us in all things. And I just kind of want to recap. We've got to go to the cross of Calvary to see our sins upon the cross and repent. You've got to see your wickedness in the light of the cross of Calvary. You've got to see that the word of God says the soul that sinneth shall die. And when the, when, when the word of God shines that light on you, you've got to see it in the light of the cross of Calvary. And you'll realize in that moment, as I did, that Jesus was on the cross for me. That he was dying for me. It wasn't just a story. It wasn't just something that Jesus did. But it was actually something he did for me. You've got to go to the empty tomb and see the stone is rolled away. The tomb is empty. Jesus is alive. He's not dead. Any one of us would still be dead. Jesus is not dead. <laughs> you need to open the word of God and go your way following the instructions that are right here in the word of God. He gives us the instructions to go by. And when death comes, remember the stone is already rolled away for you. That you can just go right on in victory. Jesus gone before you there. And go on to that heavenly city where Jesus waits with open arms to show you that place that he's prepared for you. Now I want to say one more thing as I come to the close of the message. That we've got to keep the cross in view in our lives. That's so important to, to, to keep the cross in view in our lives. So important. It is our guidepost. Now I thought about this. When... Me and my brother were younger. Dad used to take us fishing to the river, and uh, we called it the Blue Hole. You, you probably heard him talk about that before, a place we go fishing. And uh, back then, you walked across a long field, and when you come down to the long field, you just kind of had to navigate. You had an idea of where you was going, and uh, we followed Dad on down there. And when you get to the river, there's a gravel bar, and you go on down the gravel bar down a hillside, and we would just wade out there in the water and cast our lines in the water, at night and catch catfish and uh, a lot of a lot of good fish and really enjoyed ourselves and, and it's a place that that dad's dad had taken him you know before we ever came along it was a place that that he knew was a good place to fish still is I haven't been there in a while but <clears throat> I remember when we would go that there was this big tree that would it kind of would lean out over the water and as far as I know it was a sycamore tree I'm not I'm not a tree expert somebody in here may be but I'm not but as far as I know it was a sycamore tree a big white tree had bark that would peel off of it and was white underneath and uh and had a rope swing that was hanging out of the top of it and I always remember when we're standing out there in the water there's that big sycamore tree and uh we're at the blue hole years later we decided, me and a buddy, they, you can't really get in there. You're, you're not allowed to go across a field or anything like that. So me and a buddy decided we wanted to just take a boat and get there another way. And so we uh, sat in a boat quite a ways uh, uh, down, and we went up uh, in the night because we were wanting to catch catfish. So we went up in the night. And, and uh, I remember we, we went quite a long ways, and I was just keeping my eyes out everywhere we went because I didn't know exactly how far we was going to have to go. And uh, I remember we, we had went probably an hour or two, and we, and we got to a place, and I started looking around, and at night the river all looks the same, really. I mean, and I, and I started shining the light around, and all of a sudden I shined up, and there's that white sycamore tree. There's the rope 
hanging right out of it where people used to jump in the river. And I said, we're here. We're at the blue hole. But it wasn't until I shined that light and seen that marker, seen that tree, that I knew I was there. And there may be people that hear this, maybe people, and tonight you, you don't have direction. You may not be sure where you are. But it's so important to keep that old tree, the cross, in view. Because no matter where you are, if you look around, there's that old rugged cross. I know I'm in the right place. But if you're looking around tonight and you're not seeing that cross, you're not in the right place. We've got to keep the cross in view. Praise God. I'm going to sing a chorus of a song, and we're going to give an invitation. We always give an invitation. If, if, you, if you want to come to these altars, you can, or just thank the Lord right where you are. The Lord can hear you wherever you are. But be mindful, too, that these sermons always, they go out from this place, too. We're not a church that keeps things contained here. Someone will hear this somewhere. And I pray God will bless them in the moment. And I pray that you guys have been blessed tonight in hearing it too. The Lord is so good to us. Go ahead and stand with me. We'll just have a course of a song. going to open these altars and you can just spend just a few minutes just thanking the Lord, just thanking him for the cross of Calvary. Thank you Lord Jesus. I am dying O oh Lord and I have heard thy voice and it told thy love to me but I long to rise in the arms Survey and be closer drawn to thee. Make this your prayer. Draw me near, near, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. And draw me Blessed Lord, to thy precious bleed inside. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. And let my soul look up with a steadfast hope. And my will be lost and I draw me near. I'm marking it up, writing it down, spreading the word all over this town. Gonna make sure that it gets around, cause it's good news. I can't keep it to myself, gotta give it away. In light of everything going on today, there's some things that I got to say. It's called good news. Peace on earth, goodwill toward men is what the angel said to the shepherds in the fields watching their sheep. They said in Bethlehem is where you'll find the baby. Boy, I bring to you good tidings of great joy. I'm marking it up, writing it down, spreading this word all over the town. Gonna make sure that it gets around, cause it's good news. I can't keep it to myself, gotta give it away. In light of everything going on today, there's some things that I got to say Cause it's good news 
Okay, I, oh, he came walking into town and nobody knew his name. But they heard about the man from Galilee. They watched him heal the sick, raise the dead, set captives free. And today he'll do the same for you and me. I'm marking it up, writing it down, spreading the word all over this town. Gonna make sure that it gets around, cause it's good news. I can't keep it to myself, gotta give it away. In light of everything going on today, there's some things that I got to say. It's called good news. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son to hang upon a cross for you and me. He came to make things right again with God and man. Unite the Father and his family. I'm marking it up, writing it down, spreading the word all over this town. Gonna make sure that it gets around, cause it's good news. I can't keep it to myself, gotta give it away. In light of everything going on today, there's some things that I got to say. It's called good news. One more time, sing along. Marking it up, writing it down, spreading the word all over this town. Gonna make sure that it gets around, cause it's good news. I can't keep it to myself, gotta give it away. In light of everything going on today, there's some things that I got to say. It's called good news. People listen, hear what I got to say. It's called good news. People listen, hear what I got to say. It's called good news. Amen. I opened my eyes and discovered my shame I hid from your voice when you called out my name And cursed to the ground, yet you covered my shame Blessed be God and the gift that he gave Thank you, Lord and Sweat from my brow marked the place that I lay The ground where God formed me Come my grave, but God made a way till the price could be paid. And blessed be God and the gift that He gave. And blessed be God and praise His sweet name. He made a way when there was no way. Deserving was I, the death, hell, and the grave. But He made a way. Yes, He did. My Savior died on a tree And sinless arose victoriously Blessed be God and Praise His sweet name For His Son that He gave Thank you, Lord You looked at us with compassion and love Considered the cost to give it life from above not willing that any perish in sin Blessed be God and the gift that he gave Blessed, thank you, Lord You commended your love toward sinners like me While we were yet sinners, you gave your life on a tree Jesus, God's only begotten Son, blessed be God and the Son that He gave. Blessed be God and praise His sweet name. He made a way when there was no way. Deserving was I of death, hell, and the grave, but He made a way. Yes, He did. Thank you, Lord. 
Jesus, my Savior, died on a tree and sinless arose victoriously. Blessed be God and praise His sweet name for a son that He gave. Thank you, Lord. Oh, blessed be God and praise His sweet name for a son that He gave. my Savior and shed his precious blood when he took all of my sin and nailed them to his cross no the grave could not hold him now he holds the keys and all who Sinners held captive, oh, Jesus said, free. Blessed be God, praise his sweet name. He made a way when there was no way. Deserving was I, death, hell, and grave. But he made a way. Yes, he did. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Jesus, my Savior, died on the tree and sent lesser rose victoriously. Oh, blessed be God and praise his sweet name for his son that he gave. Oh, blessed be God and praise his sweet name for his son that he gave. Amen. If your name's written down in the Lamb's Book of Life, give the Lord a praise tonight. Amen. Hi, I'm Pastor James Akins of the Ozark Full Gospel Church. And I'm Josh Akins, the Associate Pastor. And we would like to invite you to come out and be a part of some of our wonderful services. Our church is located at 3081 Selmar Road, right here in Ozark, Missouri. Every Sunday morning we have two services, one at 9.30 and the other at 11 o'clock. We also have Sunday night service at 6 o'clock and midweek service on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. All of our services last about an hour, and at every service you will expect to hear uh, dynamic gospel singing and powerful preaching out of the Word of God. We have something for all ages at every service, so we look forward to seeing you and your entire family here at Ozark Full Gospel Church. Where we're touching the Ozarks with Jesus Christ. <laughs> 